Hi guys and welcome back. Uh, before starting today's video, I just want to take a brief moment and welcome all new subscribers. Quite a few of you have joined lately, so thank you so much for that. Now, usually we do tricks and slides from this book, The Royal Road to Card Magic, on this channel, but we mix it up with other effects, such as the Triumph videos we've been doing lately, as well as other nice tricks I enjoy doing, be them for beginners or more advanced ones. I want this channel to have something for everyone. Now, we'll be returning to Royal Road soon, I promise, but first I just wanted to make a quick video about some very basic techniques that I will refer to often in the coming videos. And this might not seem as the most exciting video, but I promise learning these techniques properly will make your life so much easier further down the road. And knowing these terms and techniques will make it so much easier to follow future tutorials on tricks, as well as tutorials on other channels as well. So they are really worth knowing and not just skipping. And let's get right into this. So let's start with, I guess, as basic as it can get. How do we hold the cards? So this, the way I'm holding the cards now, and I'm holding them in my left hand because I'm right-handed. So if you're left-handed, you'll have to mirror this and hold it in your right hand, of course. But this is referred to as the dealer's grip or mechanic's grip. The thumb is at this, the left side, or it can also be crossed over like so. The index finger is curled at the outer end, and on the right side, side here, we have the other three fingers, naturally. Underneath here, I can stick in like three fingers or something, because I'm holding it very lightly. View this as, I don't know, a kitten or something, that you, you don't want it to run away, but you don't want to crush it. So hold it pretty lightly. And the car cards here at the left side is a bit beveled. Don't hold the cards like this, or flat to your palm, or claw-like, like this. Hold it lightly, but securely. So this is called the dealer's grip for a reason. This is usually the grip dealers use when they deal cards. And when you deal a card, so what you're going to do is as your right hand comes to grab the card, you simply push the top card over and then the right hand's middle finger kind of enters this gap between the left hand's index finger and middle finger and draws it out like this and hold it with the thumb on top the middle finger on the bottom and the index finger at the edge here. As I said, you come over, you enter your right middle finger into that gap and you draw the cards away to deal them, like so. Now you can also deal, and this is referred to as sailing cards. If you're sitting at a big table and dealing poker hands, for example, take the card in the same way, but then you would kick away with, with your right ring finger and little finger, like this and kick the cards away like this as you deal them, okay? So that's referred to as sailing cards. Now the third way to deal a card is referred to as the stud deal, when dealing cards face up. And this is done in stud poker, for example. And once again, you use your left thumb to push that card over to the right. Your right hand comes over, but this time it comes palm down. And instead of entering with your middle finger, you're entering with your thumb. And then you grab it on top with the index finger and middle finger of the right hand. And you deal the cards like this. So face up like this. Okay, I'm gonna say a few words about the right hand end grip. It's also referred to as a biddle grip. And it looks like this. You usually take the cards from your left hand. So you have the thumb here at the inner end, the three fingers at the outer end, and the index finger is curled on top like this. And this here is referred to as the open end grip. But the cover or close end grip looks like this. And this covers more of the back of the cards, as you can see. And the thumb is over at this edge instead now. And these three fingers are over here at this edge. So it covers more, hence the covered or closed end grip. So the closed end grip, the open end grip. And note that in whichever way you hold them, the, the fingers are like 45 degrees. You're not holding them like so. They're 45 degrees to the right. Now let's talk quickly about the elevated dealer's grip, which looks like this. 
So from the ordinary dealer's grip, you come over and gra grab the cards with your right hand, with the end grip, just elevate it, and you move your index finger, your left index finger, underneath like this, and you hold it with the thumb on this side and the three fingers on this side. So you're holding the cards like this, and we'll get into the use of this grip soon. Okay, so let's say a few words on, on squaring up the deck. So squaring up the deck simply means, you know, tidying it up. <laughs> So if it's a bit unsquared like this, or a bit messy like this, we're going to square it up. And a nice way of doing this is moving it to the elevated dealer's grip, and then you square it with the right hand first, at the inner and outer ends, like so, running the hands back and forth like this, to the left and to the right, and then you run your left hand like this, so running this along the right and the left side. So again, it's a bit unsquared, you move it to elevated dealer's grip, and you run your right hand in basically an end grip, and then your left hand like this. And then you let it drop back to dealer's position. And now let's talk a little bit about spreading the cards between the hands. This is usually done, of course, when you ask the spectator to pick a card, any card and you spread out the cards like this. Now, from dealer's grip, you're gonna move your pinky, your left pinky, underneath like this, okay? And this is important to actually have that underneath for future techniques such as the spread call. And then you're going to feed cards into your receiving right hand. And note my right little finger as well. It's mirroring the left little finger. So once again, this is going to be very important for future techniques. And I like to spread the cards like this, accordion style. So you spread quite a few of cards, so they have a lot of cards to pick from. So you spread quite a few of, car few of the cards, then you go back with your right hand and you spread more cards, and go back with your right hand and spread more cards till you've gone through them all, basically. So this is a nice way of displaying many cards at the same time. So they have a big selection of cards they can pick from. Now let's remove some cards from the deck in a pleasing way using this spread. So let's say you need the four kings, for example, for a trick. So one nice way of doing this is by going through the cards and outjogging the kings. So you spread through the cards and when you come to king, you move your right hand up like so, and then use your left thumb to kind of pin that card to those cards in the left hand, and then you move your right hand and its cards back down again, and you keep spreading, and you let that card, the king, stick out. And when you come to the next king, you do the same thing. You move all the cards in your right hand, including the king, upwards, kind of pin it with your, with your left thumb, and you move the right cards back again, and then you keep doing this for the following two kings as well, leaving them outjogged or sticking out. And now you have the kings sticking out like this. Now you're gonna twist them out from the deck. You're basically going to pivot the kings against your left index finger. So you come over with your right hand, your right index finger, and you pivot the cards out. And now you can pivot them down on the table or into your receiving right hand, like so. So they are sticking out at different places. So you pivot them and you receive them with your right hand. You can also, of course, if you have a table, just let them drop the table. So let's talk a little bit about the pinky break or the little finger break, which is a very fundamental technique, but very important. And you use it in so many tricks and it can be used in so many situations. So basically the little finger break is holding a break with your little finger, believe it or not, between two packets like this. So now I have a break here. So this is usually done when we're trying to control a card, for example, and we need to keep uh, track of it. You can practice this by simply lifting about half of the cards and then just stick in the pad of your pinky into that break and then come over with other cards like so. So now the thumb, as in dealer's grip, it can be like this, but you can also apply some pressure on top to make the, the break a bit smaller. Be aware of these small lines, uh, which is quite common if you have a new deck of cards, but you can cover it quite a lot but have, by having a, a small break and as I said, having your thumb on top, applying a little bit of pressure and having your index finger curled around like so. Uh, and from the side, if like the anatomy of your hand uh, allows it, 
and basically your genetics, you can move your <laughs> these fingers over to kind of cover that uh, break more. But the little finger break is usually held for a very short moment of time, so don't worry too much about it. But to cover the right side, which is the most sensitive angle, you can simply tilt your hand a little bit over to the right like this, and that side will be completely covered as well. But make sure to practice this, because this is, as I said, it's a fundamental technique and it is used in many, many situations. Now, one way of getting a pinky break is when you've had a card selected. So let's say they select this card. You have it selected from a hand-to-hand -hand spread, like this. They select this card, they return this card, and now you put these cards back. You put the right-hand card on the left-hand card. And before they are completely squared up over here, you kind of just push up a little bit with your pinky, getting a little pinky break, a little finger break. So let's get go through that again, just quickly. So you put them flush with the card, but then you just push up a little bit with your pinky and you catch a little pinky break. And then you can move the, the card or the deck to elevated dealer's grip and square the cards while maintaining that pinky break. Another way of doing it is you have a card selected and returned, and then you simply drop the right hand card like this. And from that you can actually catch a pinky break. So how do we do that? Well, these card, the right hand cards that, that we're going to drop, we're going to tilt them just a little bit forward like this. So before dropping them, we just tilt them a bit forward and some cards will, will in jog like this, okay? And now you can pick up at that in jog and catch a pinky break again. So just play around with the angle of which you drop those cards. Because if you angle them too much, you'll get a really big in jog like this or a big bevel like this. So play around a little bit with that. Now the last technique we're going to talk about is the thumb break, which is usually just a transfer technique. So for example, if you've watched the Triumph videos, we use the thumb break when, when we do the, the double undercut. So it's only held for a moment, but usually you have a pinky break and then you come over and grab the cards in end grip. And now you have a little break here at the inner end with your thumb. As I said, you're usually just having this break for a moment, but if you're worried that it's gonna be seen, you can apply a little bit of pressure with the right curled index finger to kind of close that break. And it's very well covered, of course, from the right because of the right hand. And usually if you do, for example, a double undercut, you're going to be covered from the left as well because, because of your left hand moving here all the time. But if you're worried, just apply a little bit of pressure with the right index finger. Okay, so that's the thumb break. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. I know this was a quick one and maybe not the most exciting one, but one of the most important ones, I can guarantee you. So make sure to study these techniques and the way you hold the cards, the way you deal the cards, the way you hold breaks, little finger breaks and thumb breaks, that is going to be very important in the future. So by studying these things carefully, everything will run smoothly in the future. So once again, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions on these techniques, make sure to comment them down below. And if you like this, please subscribe. And thank you so much for all of you who's already subscribed and maybe leave the video a like. Okay, see you soon and have a lovely day. Bye bye.